On today's show, I'll be taking you through my top five Lito Adiwang finishers ahead of his return on One Championship Revolution. Currently 12-3 and in the One Championship strawweight division, Lito Adiwang is by far one of the most exciting prospects on the roster. I've gone through his career and I've picked out my top five finishers and I'm going to take you through those right now. He came through on the, uh, the Rich Franklin uh, One Warrior series. So his first couple of fights, his first couple of real standout performances are, are from that series. Um, and this was first one against Manuel Herter. You can see exactly what I'm talking about. N not only is he fast and explosive, but he's got this real confident swagger about him, which will just make everyone fall in love with his style. His hands are down. He rushes in with a multiple uh, strike attack and he finds ways around the guard. And you can just see by the way he throws and by the big smile on his face, he knows that he's landing and he's hurting. And like I said, these swarming attacks that come from all different kinds of angles, not only are very powerful, but they find ways through the guard. And as you can see with that beautiful uppercut there, he managed to find Huerta's chin pretty early in this first round and lifted him, as we'd say in our, in our gym, caught him right on the chin and, uh, and then followed up with a couple more shots. But the speed and the power that he's able to generate in short range is really what's, what's the most exciting about Lito Adiwang. He's a risk taker, he's explosive, and uh, you know, and that's that's what makes him dangerous for his opponents. He makes them nervous because at any point he could just decide he's going to go, and they won't be able to get out of the way fast enough. My next pick, number four. This is against Kohea. Um He took even less time to get this fight finished. Um, Albert Kohea, who was obviously clearly very fired up and ready for a fast start. You can see how he's twitchy and he's rocking back and forth. Like you, Lito Adiwan kind of hangs back. He's like. He looks real casual and then all of a sudden he's not to 60 in a second and he throws a long left hook to get his opponent moving back and then punches through the guard you'll see it in the replay here punches right through the guard as his opponent's already moving back on his heels he's conscious as he lands on the floor but then adi wang follows into his guard he has a strong wide base a strong wide posture so he's not getting swept or pulled in and he keeps throwing these punches down with the aid of gravity landing clean on the chin I mean, what a, what a fantastic performance. He goes on to win uh, his next fight by decision, which is another really worthwhile fight watching against Anthony Doe. But then he makes his appearance on the big show. And I would imagine there was, there was excitement and pressure, um, as well as, you know, the kid's bringing in a 3-0 record now. A lot of eyes are on him. A lot of people are expecting big things from him. And he's taking on Senzo Ikeda, who comes crashing forward and tries to start fast as well, but then runs straight into a head and arm throw. Um, and gets tangled up in this position where he's stuck against the fence. Adiwan grabs that arm and traps it between his legs and then starts, starts cranking this Americana position with the aid of his whole body, his lower body, as well as his upper body, controlling the neck and shoulders and cranking back. And you can see Ikeda's scrambling and trying to wriggle out of this. And Adiwan actually speaks to the referee and says, hey, I think his arm's done. Um, I'm not going to show you that bit. I'm sure you'll be able to find it somewhere online if you want to see it. But he actually dislocates his arm with that uh, with that attack. You know, just just a aggressive, explosive, powerful individual. And if he gets locked onto one limb, you've got to be ready to tap very quickly. Otherwise, he's taking that limb home with him. As we saw in this fight against Mitsutit, another really fast fight. You know, Pong Siri comes out explosive, tries to match him for pace, but nobody can match him for pace. This is what we're seeing. He, gets, he overwhelms people. You can see Mitsutat's tied up here um, in a Kimura position and starts to scramble. And this, this is almost as beautiful as the submission itself. Look at that little hip switch that he does. The grapplers out there will appreciate what I'm saying here. As So you can see he's got the Kimura grip on the far side. As Pong Siri tries to roll him over to the far side to reverse the position, um, Adi Wang just hooks on the back of the on the back of the knee you can see how he's hooked there which is stopping the expression of the roll it's not going all the way through he's slowing it down as pong siri rock, rocks back here you can see him switch his hips out and take half guard top and from half guard top he can now start to progress his attack he stays on the kimura and then he's going to rock forward and place his weight on his forehead and step over uh, his opponent's head with his leg and then again, same situation, his entire body is on one limb. And you can see, you can see the panic on Pong Siri's face there. Um, how he cranks that up the back. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very vulnerable position to be putting your opponents in. 
That's what we saw in the Akeda fight, and that's what we saw against Pong Siri Mitsutit. He, he's clamped onto that Kimura, he wraps over the head whilst at the same time, the same time controlling the lower body, and he's able to pull that arm all the way up the back, putting that pressure into the shoulder. Absolutely vicious. And his last fight was no different. We've, we're seeing his return on one, champ one championship revolution, and I can't wait for that. And if it's anything like this, his opponent needs to be very, very careful rushing forward. Kawahara is a, a longer range fighter. He's got a long stance, he, he, his lead leg's vulnerable. So Adiwang, instead of trying to rush him, he, he fights on the outside in this one and starts chipping him away, starts chipping into that lead leg. And he actually gets Kawahara to run onto a left hand. It's lovely work, because he feints him. You can see that little feint there. Let's go back to that first clip. You can see the stance and how long the stance is of, of Kawahara, and you can see how effective the kick is. Let me just slow this down. He throws a powerful kick to the outside calf, which forces Kawahara to spin and then follows up with a second kick. So now every time Kawahara sees uh, Adi Wang move, he thinks that kick's coming, so he rushes him, and he ran straight onto that left hand. And Adi Wang just drifts into the center of the circle just a little bit. So he squares him up, catches him on that chin with the, with the lead hook and then sprints in and he, and he tests every one of these referees reaction times. They've got to be on their game and super quick to get there before he does. He's very quick to the, to the mark, um, both at the very beginning of the round and all the way through it. it, it he's, a, he's an exciting prospect and you can just imagine working with him as a coach, you can add new things to his game each day and he's the kind of guy that takes it into a fight and wins fights with it. He's back on One Championship Revolution on the 24th of this month. Make sure you check it out.